Good evening and welcome to a special edition of Tucker Carlson Tonight. Tucker's out for what passes for the holiday these days. I'm Mark Stein. Happy Thanksgiving. Ha! Chicago Mayor Laurie Lightfoot. You must cancel the normal Thanksgiving plans, particularly if they include guests that do not live in your immediate household. Isn't guests that do not live in your immediate household the whole idea of Thanksgiving? Over the river and through the wood to grandfather's house we go? Because that's the best way to avoid the state police checkpoint on Highway 37. As is traditional, President Trump has pardoned a turkey at the White House. Any chance of the governors of Maine or Michigan or New Jersey pardoning their recalcitrant hairdressers or gym owners or restaurateurs? Not a chance. Those guys have to be stuffed and carved up as an example to any others among our rulers' subjects minded to get a little restless. 400 years after the Puritans set sail because they wished to hold open public religious services, open public religious services have been deemed non-essential. In the old country, you had to hold them in private houses, but don't even think of doing that here. If you shake off the coppers and make it back to the old homestead, what is the maximum number of persons that a freeborn American is allowed to have in his home this Thanksgiving. In Arkansas, Colorado, Connecticut, Delaware, on and on, it's 10. In Kentucky, it's eight people from no more than two households. In California, you can have people from up to three households, but you have to disperse after two hours. Even if you're outdoors, you're on the clock. It's like a parking meter, but you can't keep coming back and pumping it with extra quarters. Governor Newsom and the grand viziers of public health dining at the French Laundry in Napa Valley can linger over the aperitifs and amuse-bouche all the way to the cognacs and mint wafers, but you've got to chow down that butterball and scram. In Oregon, the maximum number permitted in a private home is six persons. In New Mexico, five. In Vermont and Rhode Island, you can socialize only with those you already live with. So take a look around the room. That's it. That's your Thanksgiving. The same kids have been off school for a year. The same spouse you've been cooped up with since the two of you got deemed non-essential back in March. Cabin fever is coming early to Vermont. The Centers for Disease Control, which has proved incapable of controlling the disease and so would rather control you instead, because frankly it's a lot easier, advises that you should take your own Thanksgiving meal with you. Take your own turkey, take your own stuffing, take your own fixings, especially take your own cranberry sauce, because that's a super spreader. And take your own disposable plate and utensils and be sure to throw them away immediately you're finished, lest Auntie Mabel carelessly pick up your plastic spoon to stir her pumpkin spice metamucil. But don't get the idea that Thanksgiving isn't going to be any fun. If you live in a state that still permits you to dine with persons from another household, why not tickle their ribs? from a socially responsible distance on the other side of the room with a Thanksgiving-themed mask. Here's Emmy Award-winning senior care facility manager, Andrew Cuomo. We have a special mask for Thanksgiving because, you know, we're also creative in New York. We are creative, and we do things a little different. And we have a special mask. Don't be a turkey this Thanksgiving. Wear a mask. Don't be a turkey. How good looking is this mask, right? You ready? Look at that. And they said vaudeville was dead. In Andrew Cuomo's hands, vaudeville isn't, but everything else is. You have to give it to Chairman Xi and those chai -coms. How many foreign adversaries could come up with a new virus that results in a pandemic of Andrew Cuomo sight gags. All over the state, there will be empty seats at the Thanksgiving table for elderly New Yorkers whose last moments of life were filled with their lethal governor's visual comedy. For Christmas, uh, could Governor Cuomo maybe order up a turkey hazmat suit and flap about in the ICU? Oregon's Kate Brown knows that to govern is to prioritize. In Portland, 
The anarchists have had the run of the city all year, and fortunately that frees up a lot of law enforcement to investigate whether Grandma is dishing up the sprouts and butternut squash for an illegal seventh diner. I will be asking okay. our Oregon State Police to work collaboratively with local law enforcement uh, to enforce uh, the limits on social gatherings. They are Class C misdemeanors, and they can be uh, enforced through a citation, a fine, or uh, through an arrest. At this point in time, unfortunately, we have no other option. America 2020. Thanksgiving is a Class C misdemeanor. Why not take it to the next level? Governor Cuomo says, with a straight face, that New York police chiefs who refuse to enforce Thanksgiving lockdowns are, quote, dictators. So if you're bored with turning in your neighbors for having a sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth guest, why not turn in your local police department for refusing to send round the Thanksgiving SWAT team? In Vermont schools next week, the little boys and girls and the non-binary moppets will be asked if they and their parents attended Thanksgiving gatherings involving persons from other households. Did grandma come round? Come on, kid, you got to answer. Because nothing says Thanksgiving like snitching on your ma and pa. Need a drink? Forget it. For the last three hours, Pennsylvania has been a dry state. Liquor stores have closed for Thanksgiving. Fortunately for Pennsylvanians, it's easy to convert the Xerox machine you use to print the mail-in ballots into a still for bootleg hooch. The governor says the booze ban is necessary. It turns out that the biggest day for drinking is the Wednesday before Thanksgiving. And, and when people get together uh, in that situation, it leads to an increase in the exchange of the, the uh, fluids that leads to increased uh, infection. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm really not sure he needed to ban the booze. A, because Dr. Fauci's already signed off on casual sex hookups, and B, because for most Pennsylvanians, the most effective disincentive to the exchange of the fluids is hearing Governor Wolf talking about the exchange of the fluids. After that soundbite, I don't plan on exchanging any fluids this side of Groundhog Day. In New Mexico, Governor Grisham has ordered grocery stores closed. Drink is non-essential, and now food is non-essential, which makes a lot of sense. If you are non-essential, clearly the sustenance required to keep you alive is likewise non-essential.